Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jim Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. Boom, bada boom. Bada bam. How you doing? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. I'm tired like everybody else. Hi, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I kind of took a nap today. You said you had a light day. I you, did. you rarely have light days. I rarely do. Yeah. And uh, so much so that I closed my door. Oh. And I undid, like, you know, I like, I like, like my chairs. You, I'm sorry. I'm pointing. I like them like nice and stiff. Oh, yeah. The, oh. the, your, your office chairs, you like to lock them so they don't lean back. I don't, it, because I'm busy. Right. Right. I unpopped the lock. Mm. Went back. Yeah. Popped it back. Took my jacket. Yeah. Put it over me. Over your face? You're like over my body like this, like, like it's a blanket? Oh, like a little, like a little blanket. And I was just sitting like this. And you've seen, you know, the inside of my blanket, or my inside of my jacket is it's smooth. I feel that thing. You see that? That's, oh, that, yeah. that's quality right yeah, there. Yeah, that's baby polar bear. I can see. Yeah, yeah it's nice. It's beautiful. It's very rare. It's very rare. And uh, so, yeah. And then I fell asleep. Wow. My wife woke me up. Mm. Uh, and I was at the factory. You were at work, yeah. And uh, I guess she was coming by to pick up something I was supposed to print off. Mm. And all of a sudden, there she uh, there's is. a knocking out the window. She's looking at me like, what? Oh. I'm like, oh, man. She knows you work hard. So. <laughs> I know, but the, the the day she comes by, yeah, yeah. here I am. And it's a fair assumption. Like, oh, I caught him this time. So this has to happen fairly regularly. Exactly. And, you know, that's exactly. How so some I'm people like, do that math. I know. I'm like, mm. uh, but it's not regular for me. That's it's uh, not. But I'm glad, I'm glad you had that. I did. It felt nice. Mm. It felt good. Yeah. You know, how about you? Did you get a little bit of a nap nap? Are no. You, or you don't want to admit it on air? No, no, I'll tell you if I get a nap. I, right. I like a good nap. No, no, no. Today I basically um, hunkered down and worked hard and just existed in, I guess what you would call, a, I guess a, like a bath of sweat and bath. stress. Yeah, that, that's a, basically a, it. Yeah. A bath? I just, it was bath. Like there was just so much sweat and stress. Yeah, I was like, taking a bath in my own sweat and stress. stress. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wait, did you go to a Korean bathhouse? Because that's the only place I know of where I have both those things: no. sweat and stress. No, yeah, no, no, no. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't. Never been to a bathhouse. You've never been to a bathhouse? No, I don't see that happen. All right, I will tell you, it is amazing. I, I yeah. it, it, Our Russian buddy feel, used to tell us about the Russian bathhouse and how awesome that and, is. And those are the ones I've really enjoyed. Yeah, I'm not. I've really enjoyed the Russian bathhouses uh, when I spent some time in Moscow. Yeah. It was fantastic. Mm, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm it was good. great. It was good. I don't even like taking baths. Why would I go to a bad house? Well, no, it's a whole like, house of it. Like, it's like the well, worst. Well, it's, so in the one I- I, I, I like went, a steam. So I like I, a dry I, sauna. Ah, so I did I did do that northern part. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't remember. The, it was a small rural town where we were at this orphanage. Right. And so they had this uh, like little sauna steam thing. Uh-huh. And all the men went in there. And uh, not all the men, just some of us men. And it was all hot and everything steaming, right? And yeah. you're just sitting there. And at first you're like, this is kind of weird. Right. And then the dude's like- you go, you go up. And I'm like, I don't know what's happening right now, but, but I'm going to, you're going to listen, but yeah. I'm going to listen to yeah. you. Uh, because it just, it, so Putin tells me to go up on, on the top shelf. Mm-hmm. And so I'm laying down face up, join it no, 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 face down, face down, face down. And all of a sudden he reaches and he grabs like this branch with all these leaves on it. Like from like Palm Sunday, like that kind of thing. It felt like it was his branches or yeah, something. Yeah. Dips it in this wheelbarrow of rainwater. Okay. Well, you and think starts, it's rainwater, but And okay. then just starts whipping me with it. Whipping your butt? Whipping my back. Just your back? Just my back. Not your butt? And then my, the back of my legs. Okay, so everything but... I think he got all of you. He did not. Oh, and well, really? Looked, he did not get the... He the, stopped from lower back to thighs. He didn't He didn't get your rear end. Uh, he was... Uh, he definitely He did. was very careful. Because I, I, I even told you all about care- this. He was careful and respectful. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was okay. my first time being yeah, I, whipped by a Russian man. With branches in a bathhouse in northern uh, uh, Russia. That's not for me, and I don't think that's for any. I of will our say listeners. it felt really, really good. Mm, yeah. Okay. And, and then we took turns, and I, I whipped him. It sounds like some. It sounds like a group of people that just want to feel shame together. That's what it feels like. I, I don't want to be a part of that. I got enough shame in my life. You I have enough to, shame in your I life. I don't need to compound it with that sort of a situation. And you I know, like I, I, don't, I don't understand how you can't enjoy these sort of things. And you know what? Mm-hmm. I know you enjoy the sauna. I know you enjoy yep. the steam. Yep. And I know you enjoy company. Yeah, but uh, here's the thing. I like that you went to go and like 
pour your heart and life out for these orphan kids that you know are malnourished <laughs> and everything, and then you go and, and live it up with the with the with the oligarchs no, in no, Russia. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. This was still at the same at the at the at the orphanage. Oh, really? It was their thing. It was so, their yeah. But no, no orphans in there though. Uh, this is getting real. I feel sus. Like, I feel like that's weird. I feel like that'd be weird if I was like, so I was in this uh, sauna with mm-hmm. some orphans. Yeah, that's weird. I don't like this. So this no. is this is making me very uncomfortable, Jimmy. I don't want to hear about your weird. Uh, Dude, it was a lot of fun. Eastern I, you Europe- know what? Go ahead. I think I have photos. Oh, jeez. I think I have photos. Okay. I'm going to go look. All right. I'm going to go look for these. Uh, I hope you have something good. We can put it up in the office here. <gasps> you would let me put a photo? Oh, yeah. Of uh, course. All right. Let me yeah. see if I got it. All right. But you know what? I do appreciate that you recognize that I would have to let you. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, you, just, you just said it. So. Um, hey, Jimmy, you know what we're talking about today? Providence. Yep. We're back on Providence. We're back on Providence. Yeah, no, there ain't, there ain't no way out of that. You, you no, admitted it. No, there's definitely, yeah. I'm, I'm following yeah. a trail right now. Yep, yep. I'm just gonna a trail see. back to your shame and submission. I know just what it is. <laughs> so anyways. Mm, yeah. So uh, we are doing the Baptist Catechism. Yep. We uh, Every Monday, we look at a couple of questions or one question. Today, we're on question 14, and we are back on the Providence thing. What are God's works of Providence? Question 14. Jimmy, what's the answer? God's works of providence are his most holy, wise, and powerful, preserving and governing all his creatures and all their actions. It's a good definition, another good one to memorize, because it's this kind of subject that is deep and profound. And to be honest, we're going to keep this very simple um, and not, we're we're not going to dumb it down. We just want to keep it simple because this is the kind of thing that goes deep. And so like, we're going to encourage you to read Lewis Burkhoff, pick up his systematic theology. Oh, yeah, uh, we love that one volume systemat, and uh, and you can just you can see how deep this goes just by reading that. And we're going to be pulling some quotes from there. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that everybody listening, or as Jimmy likes to think of you guys, our fans, yeah, our fans, uh, <laughs> our loyal fans. You know what? I can't. I don't know how to get out of that one. Yeah. That one I can't get. Out oh, of. I went back and listened. Yeah, you said it first. So did yeah. I really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's all right but then i i i I used the term right after you did so yeah without even thinking about it all right so um in 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 this question what are god's works of providence yeah um it's it's essentially giving us a a definition that says well that's god's preserving and governing all of god's creatures and all of our actions right so it's this preserving and governing and so to pull from Lewis Burkhoff, pick get his systematic theology. You should be reading that, not Grudem. Yeah, and no uh, way, Wayne. Yeah, don't just you drop that thing and then or use it to hold your you know your door open or something. Um, but Lewis Burkhoff, we use it to prop open that window. Yeah, well, because sometimes the the it, it doesn't hold. Mm-hmm. You got to have something thick and sturdy. You know. Yeah, it works really well there. It's more structurally sturdy than theologically sturdy. Is what I like to think about through them. System. <laughs> All right, continue. And the continue. only reason we beat up on them so hard is because you guys throw hissy fits when we do. Um, yeah. So not you guys, just a couple of you. All right. Brookoff says this: Providence may be defined as that continued exercise of the divine energy, whereby the Creator preserves all of His creatures, is operative in all that comes to pass in the world, and directs all things to their mm. appointed end. Now that's much more complicated, but it's a, it's unpacking and expanding with the catechism and really what the confession has to say about these things. It's God's preserving and governing all things, all yeah. of his creatures and all of their actions. And I mean, we see this in, in uh, when we're talking about preserving, mm-hmm. we see this in Matthew 10, 29, right. are not two sparrows sold for a penny and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. So mm-hmm. the aspect that God is sovereign, he's in control and he preserves and takes care of all creatures, including even uh, a a sparrow. Yes, know? and that's that's important because this whole idea of preserving is very specific, and it means that yes, uh, God is sustaining and upholding mm-hmm. and working with and through all things. But those things that are made, um, they. Oftentimes they have wills of their own. They make mm. choices, right? Um, you know, a, a little boy with a slingshot might uh, shoot a sparrow out of the air and then that sparrow drops. Well, it yeah. says that a sparrow doesn't drop unless it's a part of God's will. And yet there's a little kid who wasn't coerced. You know, his yeah. arm wasn't put behind his back. He was free to do what he wanted. Yeah. And somehow in God's preservation, uh, the little boy did what he did and... Um, God was being the 
ultimate cause, mm. but not the immediate cause of how that all worked. And I, mean, I like how you said that. And But if I may, Burkhoff also kind of touches on this, if mm-hmm. I can go ahead yeah, and yeah. share what he said. He says, uh, preservation may be defined as that continuous work of God by which he maintains the things which he created. So he created yep. all things together with the properties and powers with which he endowed them. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Burkhoff was listening to me when I was talking about mm-hmm, that. And mm-hmm. that's when he whipped up. Yeah. That, I'm, I, that. I'm actually saying, I, th- I feel like you worded that better. Yeah. Now well, he was you know. very he's succinct. Yeah. In and, and polished um, and helpful in his definition. It's good. But you know, I mean, he has that whole root beer franchise like that, you know, bears his name. So that whole beer, root beer thing, Burkhoff. Anyway. I told him just barks. No, what, I never. What is Burkhoff? How do you not know? Okay, don't worry about it. Uh, what, is this our, an old thing? Our, our li- no, it's a, it's a whole this whole thing downtown Burgoff with a G. You're supposed to get the joke Burgoff, not Burkhoff. It's a whole beer pub. They have, have root beer. You oh, can buy it. How do you not know stuff? I don't. I don't know. Is this from the oh, 1800s? No, man. It's downtown Chicago right now. All right. Anyways, um, Hebrews one three also speaks to this idea of um, of preservation. Speaking of Jesus, he is the radiance of the glory of God mm-hmm. and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. And so um, there it is. Preservation. Mm. Why do all things hold? together. Now, when you start reading the theologians like Burkhoff, who are obviously brilliant or Bob yeah, Inc. or yeah, these yeah. guys, you start to get into the nature of being and you know where does being come from? All of that is really important. So read read on. We're going to have links for you to read this mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. Are you though? Oh yeah. I do. Every week I got links in there. Do you really? You, can, you don't got to gotta check. I, you're always I, wrong you when you check up on me on the website. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. I'm going to check. Yeah. I'll check. I'll check. What about Colossians 117, Jimmy? I know that's another one that we go to. Yeah, I mean, you were uh, referencing this before, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So there's that preserving, Mm -hmm. uh, not only the creator, but the sustainer of everything. Love it. So So there's this idea of preservation, and then there is this idea of governing, right? So um, like when you look at the, uh, the catechism, it's his most holy, wise, powerful, preserving and governing of all things, right? Mm, all creatures mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, all mm-hmm. their actions. Uh, Burkhoff says this about governing. The divine government may, de- may be defined as that continued activity of God, whereby he rules all things teleologically so as to secure the accomplishment of divine purpose. This government is not simply a part of divine providence, but just as preservation and concurrence, the whole of it, but now considered from the point of view of the end to which God is guiding all things in creation, namely to the glory of his name. In other words, from the great events of history to these seemingly insignificant details of our lives, Mm -hmm. God is governing all things, which means he is moving. He is actively engaged in moving all that is happening towards specific ends and ultimately to the specific end of of his glory. So Joe, for, you know, uh, our Steve McCoy out there, right. Who may have heard you and got confused when he used the word, uh, teleologically <laughs> teleology. Yes. Teleology. Yes. yes. Teleologically. Yes. Yeah. How, how would, how would you define that? It has to do with, um, the, the design or purpose of things. Hmm. So when you're talking about the teleological, like, let me go back to the quote here. Hang on a sec. All right. Yeah, move away from he, uh, Webster's MD. Who rules? I don't have Web, Webster's MD. I don't know. I can't remember the one. <laughs> he rules all things teleologically. So he rules them all, moving them towards their intended goal, their purpose. Mm. So you know, just click. If you got Lagos, you can click on it. I don't have Lagos open, but you can then click on teleologically and you could it'll just tell you what it is yeah i went to dictionary.com okay there you go why are you asking me if you got it up just read it because i knew you knew it okay and, so, I, and I, just in case you asked me <laughs> oh, <laughs> i saw that word i was like yes um mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> listen the reason the reason i know any definitions is because i look them up when i don't know them yep and sometimes i figure out that i don't know them because somebody like jimmy will call me on it and i'll be like <laughs> dang it now i gotta look it up so when we when we're looking for like, where, where do we see this in scripture? God working 
all things towards an intended purpose and goal, all things in creation, Burkhoff has this quote that we like mm. where he begins to lay out specific uh, passages of Scripture. Yeah, I mean, he says, Scripture explicitly declares this divine government to be universal. Mm -hmm. Psalm uh, 22, uh, verses 28 and 29. And also Psalm 103, 17 and 19. Dan 4, 34 to 35. The book of Dan? Dan 4, 34. The book of Dan? Huh? Do you mean Daniel? Daniel, Oh, yeah. you can't say Dan. People aren't going to know what you're talking about. There's no book of Dan. Oh, you're telling it me people don't like know the like shortening? It sounds like some weird metaphor. Someone don't know the shortening. Nobody in the, no preacher in the world says turn to Dan and then chapter verse. 2 Corinthians, 1 Timothy 6.50. <laughs> uh, it is really the execution of his, of his eternal purpose, embracing all his works for the beginning, all that was or is or mm -hmm. ever shall be. But while it is general, it also descends to particulars. Right. The most significant things, Matthew 10, 29 to 31. It's the sparrow passage. Yep. That... Oh, yeah, insignificant. I, didn't, I said significant. The most insignificant thing, so Matthew 10, 29 and 31, that which is seemingly accidental, Proverbs 16, 33, the good deeds of men, uh, you know. Uh, Phil, Phil 2, 13. Yeah, Phil 2, 13. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of how to word it. Uh, as well as their evil deeds, mm. Acts 14, 16. They are all under divine control. God is king of Israel, Isaiah 33, 22, but he also rules among the nations, Psalm 47, 9. Nothing can be withdrawn from his government. This is a big doctrine. Yeah. This is a high view of God. We don't apologize for it because just as, as Burkhoff laid this out, uh, this is very scriptural. Yeah. Even the evil actions of wicked people are operating under God's providence under yeah, his government yeah. they're responsible for what they do whether you're looking at acts chapter 2 and acts chapter 4 when peter is blasting uh religious leaders for crucifying jesus how they're responsible he simultaneously says this was according to god's this was according to god's plan yeah yeah, yeah. so he sees this doctrine peter does and we see it in other places in acts and proverbs and everything else so we believe that god is absolutely sovereign and what providence is is the ongoing, active, outworking mm -hmm. of the decree of God. So we talked about the decree of God, and we've talked about it quite a bit. Like, if you can think about it like this, too, super simplified. The decree of God is the plan. Providence is the outworking of that plan. He's active, he's mm -hmm. involved, he's mm -hmm. engaged. So we're not deists. God didn't make it, wind it up, set it like a clock and is out. Yeah. He is involved. You know, it's like... Um, it's the difference, you know, like, let's say that I'm going to cook some crab and you're going to cook some crab, Jimmy. First of all, and then you don't cook. Yeah, crab. That, that's what I'm saying is what I do is I take my fake crab sticks. Like I sent you that picture the other day. It was disgusting. Didn't I send you that picture? You the other did day? send it. So I, I got my fake gross. crab meat on a plate. I throw butter on, in a little dish. I put it in the microwave and then I'm cooking it. I mm. walk away. That's the deist version of making crab. Gosh, what what you so do, gross. you you are more providentially engaged in it all, preserving and governing all this stuff because you you're boiling it, you're putting salt in the water when it's boiling, you know, and you you've got the butter in a saucepan and you're doing your thing, you're putting the chives on there and everything. Like you do all of that. <laughs> That's the difference. That's what I'm saying. Dwell is an audio Bible app that Jimmy and I have used for the past year, and we love it. Fantastic. Dwell will help you get into the Word, but it also helps get the Word into you. With many different voices, Bible translations, and even background music, which you can turn on or off, you're going to love listening to Scripture. But Dwell is so much more than a traditional Bible app, right? That's right, Joe. There's tons of features, and let's just touch on a few. One of the most requested features is a sleep timer mm -hmm. and is now available on Dwell. Love it. You can fall asleep to your favorite books and stories of the Bible without losing your spot or draining your battery. End your day with God's word in your ears and on your heart. There's also a playlist. Dwell has tons of scripture playlists, like ones based on mood. So wherever your mind and heart are at, you can be immediately comforted and encouraged by the word of God. There's also volume control. Take full control of the volume of the music and voices to customize your time with God. I like that because I like to have that, uh, that that music bed a little bit higher. I mm -hmm. want it in there. Well, to get started with the Dwell app, go to dwellapp.io slash jofo to get a 20% discount and jumpstart your spiritual discipline of taking in God's word. That's dwellapp.io slash jofo for 20% off an annual or a lifetime subscription. What do you got your phone out for? 
I'll take a nice photo of you. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a good photo because uh, with these things right there. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought yeah. it looked good, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, why don't you try and, try and focus? I but, am focused. So, I, 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 sorry. Okay. I was, you're not I you're saw focusing you looking on good. me. I saw you looking good. I, I, I always look good. You should be used to it by now. Mm-hmm. Still starstruck, aren't you? No. Kind of a big deal. Nope. Kind of a big nah, deal. Nah, I don't think so. Yeah. You, said, you came to Redeemer because you wanted to go to a star church. You, know? <laughs> you wanted to go to Megastar. First you know? of all, I, I would have You went are elsewhere. my Justin Bieber, and I am your... Uh, what oh, was his name? Really? Lenz? Uh, Lance? Was Carl Lenz? Carl Lenz, yeah. So are you telling me you... No, I just have his body. No, That's no, all no, I'm saying. Not his theology no, no, or his no, no, morals. No, no. So you are Carl Lenz. Yeah. I am... Justin Bieber. I yeah. am Bieber. You're, you're the Biebs. Yeah. Yeah, I'm older. I mean, the only thing that's like true is I'm like bigger, he's from Canada. More muscular. And I came from Canada mm-hmm. and came here. Yeah. Though I wasn't born. Canada. Oh, I almost forgot. I literally, if you look at my phone, I have a, I took a note. All right, let's hear this. You look too, you, I, I wish you guys a, could see this. I he had a so dream excited. last night about you and I wrote it down. Wait, it's wait, wait. Real, do you want, no, no, let's do it on the next episode. Oh, I'll save it. I'll save, save it. Save for the next right. episode. We'll, we'll save for the next we'll episode. We'll open for our Thursday episode with that. With that, yes. Let's get into bed. and start wrapping this one up. Let's get, oh, Jimmy's got to go. No. Jimmy's like, I gotta get going. Actually, Jimmy wants me to go get cigars is what he wants. That's exactly it. So (laughs) we can smoke for the next episode. (laughs) All right. So Benjamin Bedham, we've been pushing his exposition of the Baptist Catechism. And there's a ton of really good questions. And we've just, I've I've pulled some of them out here for us to read. Um, So Jimmy. Yeah, he's got tons. We're just going to, we're not going to look at all of these, but um, just so you get a feel for the way Bedham engages in the exposition, how biblically oriented he is and how valuable this kind of a resource is for you. Now, you don't have to buy this. You can um, you can read Benjamin's exposition online for free. Mm-hmm, so do mm-hmm. that. Uh, but if you want, like us, like we have the paperbacks because we want that book. It's a yeah, really yeah. good book. So, so here, I'm going to start with these two because mm-hmm. I think uh, first, because uh, I want to, we've already discussed this. But uh, is God's providence universal? Mm-hmm. Yes. His kingdom ruleth over all. Psalm 103, 19. So that's the baseline here. Yeah. Right? That's the baseline. Then it, he goes it on. It sort of answers it, all of it, right? Big yeah. picture. Yeah. I mean, and hey, is it just the earth? Ah. Uh, does it extend to all the worlds? Yes. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. To all creatures? Yes. Now, how about this? Aliens. That, that exactly mm-hmm. extends to all creatures, right? Yep. Now, does it extend to inanimate creatures? Yes. I just, I want you to read that one, that quote. Because that oh, you can't, there, can't pronounce. I, I can't uh, pronounce. The, yeah. Uh, he binds the sweet influences of the pleads and looses the bands of Orion. And so now uh, it's, it's pleads, it pleads, pleads, pleads. Go ahead. What are you asking? What is it? These are constellations. Orion. I know what Orion is. Yeah. These are constellations. I've never heard of pleads. Oh my goodness, Jimmy. I can't. I, oh, that's right. You went to. Judson. I, I forget that you didn't go to like a real university. Stop it. <laughs> so dumb. Okay, pleads. Uh, I actually have no idea what that is. See? You're um, just, why, why, it why? is known as the Seven Sisters and Messier 45. It's an open star cluster containing middle-aged hot B-type stars in the northwest of the constellation. Hold on. Taurus. Wait, wait, wait. You just said... So go back and say that Hot again. Hot B-type stars? That's what you and I are. <laughs> no, no, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Before that, you said middle-aged. Yeah, it says a clustering of middle-aged Hot B-type stars. So that's me. Is that me? I'm hot. I'm still hot. I'm middle-aged, but I'm hot, but I'm only B-level. But you're B-level. It's better than C. At, we're a cluster. Mm-hmm. We are the Did you make that up? No, I'm reading it right here. Okay. That is literally what it's... I'll all put right. it in the show. All right, all right. So... um. Yeah, aliens, man. <laughs> so, so yes, uh, as Joe believes, the truth is out there that we're not alone. It's not out there anymore. It's all it's 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 in here now. It's in here now. Oh yeah. So we, they're here among us. We even had a listener saying like, "Hey, man, I was maybe most interested in more of the green and gray alien talk." Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> because here's the thing, Joey has some thoughts, and he's got I've some opinions. Yeah, he's got opinions. opinions. Um, uh, but I more I don't have opinions on aliens. I don't believe in aliens. I just like. You don't believe in aliens? Nope. So hold on. Hold on, hold on. Bigfoot, Sasquatch, you're a hundred. No, I don't believe they exist. <gasps> don't even we have had this. We've had this conversation. Have we? Yeah, I, technically there's no evidence for it. The best evidence is uh, eyewitness testimony from reliable sources, but there's no scientific evidence. So I, if I had to say, like, well, no. I want to believe in You Bigfoot. want to I believe? I want to believe in Why Bigfoot. is it that you want to? Oh, because he's a monster. Monsters are cool. What about Loch Ness? No, that, that's a lake. It's just it, Loch. It, yeah. What do you call him? What, Ness. Nessie. Yeah, that's not a thing. That's not real. No. Well, we got crazy stuff in the ocean, including 
what? Unidentified underwater objects. You know, like <laughs> the uh, so the aliens there's went- flying saucers, and then there's submerged crafts as well. It's like a whole thing. Huh. You got to listen to the different. Um, I'm good. What do you got? All right, let's get back into yeah. Bedham's. All right, here, here's a couple that I liked. Um, does it, speaking of God's providence, does it order all events relative to particular persons? Yes. Mm. Man's days are determined. The number of his months are with God, God from Job 14, 5. And the kingdoms and societies of men? Yes. He changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up. Daniel 2, 21, which means Trump or Biden chosen by God, right? It's part of the plan. Now that doesn't mean that we didn't make a big stupid mistake. We could have done that. You could make a big stupid mistake and it's still a part of God's plan in some way. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you sometimes you reap the whirlwind, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> but what I love about this though, and I love that Benham hits on this. Uh he makes sure to hit both these points. Uh does does God's providence order all events relative to a particular person? Mm-hmm. So, do I matter? Yeah, right? it's good. do I matter in in what's going on in my life? Is is God has has He ordained uh, my way and and mm-hmm. what's happening to me and and where I'm going about and what's you know the experiences that I'm having? And so now, bigger picture, mm-hmm. not only are you important, but what's happening in the world around you has been ordained. It 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 cautions against. I, I love what you're saying. It cautions against thinking that you don't matter, that yes. God isn't involved in your life. It also cautions you against thinking that you're the center you're of the You're the only one, right? Because right. you even hear like worship songs, right? Mm-hmm. Some worship songs are devoid of this intimate relationship with God and others are like this love language that's really like a really, so, some love songs that are really Open weird. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. <laughs> Open the <laughs> eyes of my heart. I want to see you. <laughs> Do you want to touch his face, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just want to touch his face? I understand the sentiment. Of course. I understand the sentiment. Yeah. And again, there's a place for that. But for some people, they, there's a focus mm-hmm. on this. Uh, and and you're right. Where it makes me the center, it's it's more of like a, I shouldn't say more of. It can lead to this danger of, self-centeredness yeah and we wonder why we have uh church members or uh uh not even members regular attenders and visitors that are very selfish and self-centered mm-hmm. because yeah. hey we're singing about how it's all about me and right. god why do i need you yeah hey, listen if god works around my schedule and my interest then you should the, as the well the church should as well <laughs> yeah. right yeah <laughs> and what about um like um evil what about good? What about the things that we do? Uh, Bed- Bedham gets into that stuff as well. Yeah, he says, uh, to all good actions, uh, yes, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, Psalm 37, 23. Mm-hmm. And to evil actions, yes. Genesis 45, 8, it was not that you sent me hither, but God. Mm. I mean, that's that's pretty clear. And you may not be comfortable with it. You may not like it. But all of this is said to be mysterious. And even even Bedham, Bedham says that. Our God's providence is mysterious. Yes, absolutely. His judgments are a great deep from Psalm 36, 6. So we recognize, and we've talked about this a lot, we recognize that evil is real, that wickedness is rampant, that injustice is all over the earth, and yet somehow God is governing things and bringing them to a particular end. And that end is his glory, but that end also includes judgment mm. and redemption. So there is a, a truth that things are going to be made right yeah. in the end. And that's something that we rejoice in. And I think one of the things we should also be rejoicing and practicing in is uh, knowing the time and place. Like when mm. when evil things do happen, yep. when people are suffering, like it, it's a rare time I've seen this, Joe. It's It actually is a rare time. I, I mean, I've heard of other people talking about it, but uh, um, am I boring you, Joe? No, I just I'm I'm like three hours out three hours of sleep. Thanks for being compassionate. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I didn't get a nap today, Jimmy, Joe, like some Joe people. Was, Joe is mean mugging me. He's so bad right now. <laughs> but it was like I've only seen it or experienced it uh in a very small measure, but I've heard of others 
where in the midst of their suffering, a well-meaning mm-hmm. and well-intentioned believer, you know, brother and sister or, or sister in Christ would be like, well, the Lord gives and the Lord takes. What you gonna do? What you, I, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's God's mystery. He's a mystery. Sorry about your child. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then like, you know, that is, uh, I agree. And, and, and in I'm my trying experience, to, that's I'm rare. I'm trying to make it as Sup- better. Super you know. rare. Good intentions, uh, I'm sure, but no. And so the, all of these truths are important to communicate and to understand, but they work sort of like ingredients, right? Like um, if I'm trying to, to help somebody, lead somebody, serve somebody, mm-hmm. um, I'm trying to prepare them, uh, then there is a certain order in which these truths should be communicated. Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the, sometimes the most immediate truth that you communicate to people in times of difficulty, suffering and affliction is that you love them, Yeah, that you are with them, that you are for them, that they matter to you. Um, yeah. and now sometimes people do need the reminder, yeah. right? They do need the reminder. And I'm not saying to avoid that, you don't, but I also think that that's why it's really important for, uh, churches to be, uh, steadfast in preaching the gospel and the truth, because yeah. at least I, I can only speak from my own experience. And in, in, in this is when my wife and I were going through a season of suffering, mm-hmm. uh, I didn't need someone to tell me, you know, uh, the Lord gives and the Lord takes. Yeah. I didn't need someone to tell me God is sovereign. I didn't need someone to tell me this is the mystery of Christ and that he works all things out, uh, um, to, you know, for good in his glory. Right. right. I didn't need that. Because I had the the foundation, right? I had other brothers and sisters uh, and pastors that fed me and and pushed me and spurred me on uh, to embrace the the truth of the gospel and truth of God's word. Uh, to where, in the midst of it, that's what gave me comfort. That's what gave mm-hmm. my wife comfort. Yeah, was the preservation and sovereignty of our God who who preserves and governs. Mm-hmm. Well, that's and again. We all need these truths, sometimes in different orders. You know, um, the person who is angry at God for his, what they would consider unjust actions in their lives, is going to need to be, get some pushback yeah. on that. Yeah, 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 um, for sure. And so it really depends on where people are at. And that's what it means. I mean, especially pastors, you know, you guys are supposed to be surgeons of the soul, right? You're supposed to, you know, you're, you're doctors, essentially, uh, mm-hmm. you're, and you need to know you have to do more than diagnose. And like, oh. a, like a real doctor, not like a Liberty University one. <laughs> like you're a real one. <laughs> like a real legit one. <laughs> Continue, Joe. I'm just saying like... Oh, that felt good though. Anybody can diagnose, man feel bad. You know, that's not... Yeah. It. That's not... A pastor, a leader, you need to do more than man bad, man uh, man sin. Okay, so what's going on? Why is it happening? What does the Bible say? Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, how mm-hmm. do you lead them through this now? Yep. So, um, what do we care about all this stuff? Why is this important? Um, things that come to my mind are God is present, active, in preserving and governing all things, including your life. I like how you said it, Jimmy, that um, does God care about me? Yeah. Right? Does God care about me and what I'm going through? Yes. And providence is one of those doctrines that emphasizes that. And that means that chance isn't a thing. Yeah. It's not a thing. He's and only it, a rapper. Unless, and it's, in, and it's what Jimmy believes in when he's at the craps table. So... <laughs> those are odds yes oh, the odds yes the odds <laughs> no, but chance as this idea that chance is a determining factor like things just happen at total random without purpose yeah, yeah. or cause or anything well God is the ultimate cause and so we know that chance isn't a thing not like people think so um, this means that God's providence isn't mechanical I it's, like that it's I not like just that. like he's he's got this machine that operates mm. he set the timer and now it's going yeah, you just kind of throw it in there. You put in the widget and out, you know, right? whatever. It's yeah. just, that's not, this is, it's the, God's providence is, I, I'd say this way, God's providence is not mechanical. It is holy yeah. and it is wise. He knows what is best and it is powerful and it has to be for God to pull off his will, ultimately, to, to pull off his will throughout all ages in all creation. Mm. It takes divine power. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You could follow us online on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Diva or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, DrVotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email I'm blast. I'm <laughs> the store, JoeFoStore.com, and grab some gear. Fresh Pod, do you need my wallet? Fresh Pod every Monday and Thursday. Blog post on 
Wednesdays are available as well as video content. Later. Later.